Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour, chapter 58, the great book of Isaiah, Yahweh's salvation. That's what it's all about. It's how, how salvation comes to be. Now, our Father has told us in the last couple of chapters, He said, there are some religionists and rulers want to um, give a warning of, of what I have warned you about. And we come to this 58th chapter, and he is very bold. He says, you cry it out. Don't just whisper it. You let it be known that there's a falsehood out there. And then he kind of come down on those that play church. He said, they, they are so righteous or think they are, but they don't follow my ways. And... Um, uh, and we kind of see a warning and a comparison there to those that do what's right and those that simply are wrong. So chapter 58, verse 8, we're going to pick it up there. We ask our Father for a word of wisdom, and verse 8 reads, Then shall, when you try to do right, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. That's to say the Father watches your back even. when You don't have to worry about what's out front. He even watches the front and the back. But um, when, when you are in the light, you're in the truth, the true, true word of God, not man's traditions. Now, man's traditions are seemingly... As the Father said, they, they like to say God. They like to try to follow me, but they don't listen to what I say. Okay, Verse 9. <clears throat> then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. He'll hear you. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, that's to say what, what man's traditions will burden you down with, the putting forth of the finger, that means pointing at people in anger, and speaking vanity or talking nonsense, if you'll talk truth, if you'll talk the word of God, then that light will be with you and God will hear you. Otherwise, he's not going to. You know, if, if you're in a false teaching that is contrary to God's word, he's not going to answer you. It may be a good chance for someone to take inventory as to how they study. Is it man's traditions or God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse? Verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, that's to say, if, if you... Some people translate this, if you share your bread and satisfy the afflicted soul, that's the bread of truth. If you, if you teach the truth whereby people can be fed with it, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. In other words, uh, your light is going to dispel all darkness. God sees to it. When you begin to search the real truth from God's Word, not what man might say, and, and not be among the bulrushes which blow this away one minute and some other way, and you, then you end up never knowing really what truth is. And it's real simple to find your way. It's the Word of God. Okay. The letter He sent you. But He said, if, when, when you have that truth and you share that light and you let your light shine, then I'll, I'll be with you. I'll hear you. I'll say, here I am. And he will be there. And he will assist you in whatever it is you need or want. Verse 11, that's in his way, of course. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. How, how often is that? Continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought. In other words, however severe the drought is, for in the world for one of truth and confusion and babble. You're not going to, have, there's not going to be a draw for truth for you. You're going to have it. Why? You've got the Word of God. And He hears you and He's with you. 
and make fat thy bones. That, that's to say to invigorate your very body. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Th this word fail, translate it deceive or a lie. In other words, whose waters deceive not or lie not. Why? Because it's the water of truth, the living water, which is to say Christ. It'll never fail you. But if you start listening to strange waters and strange teachings that are contrary to the Word of God, though they may say it's holy, 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 and sing like angels in heaven about it. It doesn't make it right. It's deceitful. And he said, if you'll, if you'll follow me, if you'll do it my way, and if you'll, uh, your soul will always be provided with truth whereby you'll never be deceived, especially by the false Christ, okay? In the future, that's what it means, 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. This is yet future. Thou shalt rise up, raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. That's to say uh, uh, repairing wrecked homes, misguided people to take that truth and show them the correct way. That's to say your father, the kinsman redeemer, he that makes all things right, if, if you go his way, if you partake of his water, the living water, the truth in other words, and, and stay away from deception and lies, then you will have that truth and he will be with you. He says, I'll hear you. He, he didn't only say, I'll hear you. He'll say, I'm here, and he will be. Verse 13, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, what is your Sabbath today? It's Christ. Don't turn your back on Christ. And call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing their own ways, and him, of course, is Christ, not finding thine own pleasure, not nor speaking thine own words. But whose words? Christ's words, the living word, God's truth. That's how you find it. And, you know, uh, our Father is a jealous God. He's, why, boy, you're his child. He's your nearest kin, spiritually speaking. And if you're messing around with lies and trying to follow someone else, he gets jealous. And he certainly doesn't like it. And what he has said in this chapter, I won't hear you. And you that do see the truth, you better cry out the warning to the others, whereby they are forewarned as to what's happening. Verse 14. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Do you know what your heritage is? Do you know the promises and the covenant that God has made with Jacob, the natural seed of Israel, bringing forth the Sabbath, which is to say Christ, that is a blessing to one and all, all peoples. Don't ever, as this chapter has taught, don't ever let man's traditions place a yoke on you that bring that harnesses you to hardship and and lies and deception. But stay with the Father and what he's saying, I'll see to it. I'll see to it that you walk on the high places. That means that things fall to your credit in good and that that is right when you care about your family and that heritage, the heritage that is eternal, <clears throat> that inherits that lot, that acreage, as it is described in the millennium chapters, where each of Jacob's children receive a reward. God's elect, as it is written 
in Ezekiel chapter 44 have their own reward, their own heritage. Their heritage, as you would read in Ezekiel 44, is God himself. What a blessing and what a time to live that you can live at a time when, when our Father uh, blesses those that um, follow him. Now, here we go with chapter 59. Um, and um, actually, um, we find out what causes the breach. Okay. Have you ever had a breach between you and God? Well, sin and transgression against his word usually causes it. Chapter 59, verse 1, and it reads, Behold, you look here, the Lord's hand is not shortened, it's not weak, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, he's not deaf, that it cannot hear. If you call, he hears if you're doing it his way. Okay, and and he's not his like like said his hand is not shortened to where he can't reach out and help you. He can help you. He knows you, and and he knows what you're thinking, so you can't con him. And when you're honest with him, and when you're seeking, he's going to see that you find. Verse two. But your iniquities, that your sins have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. In other words, um, um, if you call on the wrong God, especially, he's not going to hear. That is to say, false teachings, the false Christ, which some would call the Antichrist. If, if you're waiting, in other words, some people teach doctrines that are against the Word of God that causes people to line up and accept the first Jesus that sets foot on this earth in the so-called Second Advent. Not, not being familiar with God's Word, you don't know that the false Christ comes first. No, you don't understand, brother. We're going to be gone. Uh-oh. You're not familiar with the book of Ezekiel, which has more about the millennium and the Lord's day than, than the book of Revelation. And, uh, and it does. It goes into much detail, the layout of the land, the people uh, during the Lord's day, the millennium. But it especially says in chapter 13, I'm against those that teach my children to fly to save their souls. If God is against something, don't fall in this category because he will not hear you. If he's against something, you'd better wake up and realize you're listening to traditions and get the gospel on, the gospel armor on and in place and stand against the fiery darts of Satan and see that you're partaking of the true water that gives you victory over all your enemies as a servant of God. Sin can sure let you fall short. That can be the breach that will keep God from answering your prayers or confuse your understanding whereby you fall into Babel, which is to say confusion, or Babylon. God is the author. Is, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And you need to find it. What, what is sin? Sin is to transgress God's law, that is to say, His Word. If, if you're not familiar with His Word, how are you going to know when you transgress against it? You wouldn't, really. You might hear some man say, well, that, that'll be fine, you do it this way or that, but, but you need to stop and see what God has to say about it. And you do it exactly by what we're doing now, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Let God speak, not man. Verse 3. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Sin. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perversiveness. Uh, that's to say wickedness. And anytime, anytime you're misleading God's children with false teaching, holy, 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 and it's not at all, it's transgressing the very word of God, going against God's word. Um, 
that's the kind of blood, that's, that means murder. When you begin to bring about the death of souls, that's worse than death of flesh because that has to do with eternity. Verse 4, none calleth for justice. That's to say to do what's right and just. Nor any pleadeth for truth. They don't seem to search for it. They listen to yo-yos. They trust in vanity. That's, this word is tuhu. Not used all that many times in God's word. And it means, oh, empty it is void. And speak lies. They conceive mischief. And bring forth iniquity. Anytime you bring forth iniquity, um, it's, uh, you're, you're making religion out of falsehood. That's bad. That is one thing, lies that uh, steer away from God's truth. And, you know, it is amazing to me that God's plan of salvation, which this book is about, that's what it means, that's what the name Isaiah means, Yahweh salvation, Salvation is so simple that a child can understand it. That's to say the Word of God. If you brush aside all those old traditions and listen to what God is saying, it is so simple to find salvation and to be pleasing to Him and receiving His blessings that I know not why man goes to so much trouble to cause God hurt and anger. Uh, that is to say, to disappoint him. Verse 5. They hatch cockatrice eggs. Th that's serpent eggs. And weave the spider's web. They, they weave a web of lies. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and, they wh and that which is crushed breaketh out unto, into a viper. In other words, you're going to lose when you mess with falsehood and deception especially if it's Satan lies, all the way around. And you try to, you go ahead and try to weave you a garment out of that web, that spider web, and, and see what you get. Okay. Go ahead and weave you a nest of lies and deception and, and sin, rather than the gospel armor of Almighty God in its simplicity. Um, if, if you eat one of those eggs, you die, and if you crush one of them to try to get rid of it, a spider, a snake comes out and bites you, okay? You lose both ways when you mess with Satan and his lies. And unfortunately, Satan uses pulpits a great deal. You want to be careful. It's one of his best favorite places to work because he can deceive masses by people that do not teach God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse and claim to be a church. I'm not condemning nor judging anyone. Facts are facts. Truth is truth. That is it. Verse 6. Their webs shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence is in their hands. Do you, know, do you know what our garments are made out of in heaven? They're made out of righteous acts. Revelation chapter 19 verses 6, 7 and, six and, seven and 8. Your righteous acts are the fine linen, that white linen that you wear in, in, in the kingdom. If all your works are crocodile eggs, the uh, cockatice eggs, and spider webs, sin, you're not going to have anything to wear. It's not going to make you any clothing. Uh, what I'm saying is you're going to be naked there. That's biblical. That's the great book of Revelation documents it. Verse 7. Their feet run to evil. Man, they can't wait. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Try to mislead people. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. In other words, you, you leave a trail of misery and confusion in your religion. Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. 
and it chapter by chapter and verse by verse, truth to truth to truth, end to end, from the end to the from the beginning to the end, is God's truth that will lead you. Have you ever wondered what 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 do you mean, brother? In our church, we read the Bible. Oh, you read one verse or two, and then you talk about other things for an hour. How much did you really learn about God's Word? And again, I'm, I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying facts are facts. If that's the way it is, hey, that's the way it is. Did you drift in that hour uh, after that one little verse? Did you drift away from God's Word and go into traditions? Our Father doesn't like that. He would rather you stuck with His Word. Chapter by chapter, and verse by verse, otherwise you leave a trail of misery and destruction as far as salvation and eternal life is concerned, that people are not deceived. In other words, lies won't cut it. False teaching won't cut it. Verse that, that's what your father is saying. Do you, do you understand what he's doing here? He's saying there could be a breach between me and thee. And I'm telling you what the breach is, it's lies. And it's not following my word. And if you want to, me to hear you, you better patch it up. You better repair that breach in the wall. For quite frankly, God is our wall. Next verse, please. Verse 8. The way of peace, they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. In other words, you're never, if you follow them, especially the teachings of Kenites, you're never going to find truth and you're never going to find peace. You're never going to have peace of mind, in other words. Peace of mind comes from assurance in holding God's Sabbath, which is to say Christ, and have that living word in your forehead rather than nonsense. And when you have that seal of God in your forehead, which is the truth, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, no one can deceive you. You know God's overall plan, the events that consummate the end of this age. You don't follow those crooked paths. You stay on the path, the way. What is our way? Christ. Verse 9. Therefore is judgment far from us that that is right and that is, that is justified. Neither doth justice overtake us, never catches up with lies. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity, darkness. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. That's what false teachings will do for you, friend. Well, how do I know if I'm in darkness? Well, if you're confused. If you study, if your church to so-called and, and you really try to dig, and they don't bring you into light, truth from God's Word. If, if it doesn't, well, how do I know? Well, if it's not clear in your mind, if you can't see the overall plan of God, whereby you have understanding, you're in darkness. I don't care how churched you are. If, if you don't see truth, then you're in darkness. And you need to search and come into the light and let your light shine, whether it's midnight or noon, as we read. You're going to have that brightness, that light, that you can even share, for Christ is that light. Verse 10, uh, they continue, We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men, spiritually dead in a hammer. Like they're blind and they're trying to find the walls or the, the parameters that God has placed on us of what truth is. And they can't find a solid wall of truth. They're just stumbling around looking for truth. And if you stick in traditions, you're never going to find it. You're only going to find it studying God. He, he sent you this letter personally. He sent it to you that you could have 
clearness of clear clear thoughts and clarity of mind that you could follow him that you could be blessed what he's talking about is a breach and if you're so confused you don't even know spiritually where the walls are and if you can't see truth you're spiritually dead which Christ do you serve? Do you serve the first Christ that appears or the second in the second advent, supposedly? The first is the Antichrist. Have you been taught that? If you are taught that, then you're not going to be deceived and you feel real comfortable knowing you're going to stand against him. Why? It's God's plan. That's what Mark chapter 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21 is all about. That's Christ's message. You don't have to feel around for walls. You know exactly where you are. And God's word gives you that comfort. Yeah, they stumble around. And this is not degrading blind folks. It's saying they're spiritually blind. Verse 11. <clears throat> we roar all like bears. And mourn sore like doves. We're either grumbling or we're cooing. Isn't it sweet? Okay. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. Why? It's hidden from him as long as he told you coming out the gate. If you got that breach and your iniquities drive you away and your traditions, you're not going to find it. It's not going to be there. Not only can you not find the breach, you can't find any part of the wall. Verse 12. Why? For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. Um, um, the, the sins we know very well. Well, it would seem that some might think they know sin. But sin is quite frankly, there's no sin in being ignorance of God's word, but it's a sin to stay that way. Okay, verse 13. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. In other words, you conceive a thing of naught. You, you make plans that are lies, deception, and falsehood. That's not going to please our Father. It's going to disappoint Him and like he's already warned, I, I won't have it. I won't hear you. And then he gives the comparison to the person that does listen and prays to him that is honest in seeking the light. And he says, I'll answer. I'll say, I'm here. I'm with you. And I'll bless you. Why, why is it so hard for people to make up their mind to follow the word whereby you know in following God. God knows how difficult it is for me and what he's leading up to here, I'm going to simplify it for you. I'm going to help you out. Okay. Verse 14 to continue. And judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth afar off for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. In other words, if, if, um, if um, truth falls in the street, that that is right cannot enter your so-called house of God. Okay. You let it play out coming out the gate. And, and this would seem to be very, very confusing. However, it isn't. Verse 15. Yea, truth faileth. You're missing it, is what he's saying. And he that departeth from evil 
maketh himself a prey. In other words, if you try to do what's right, Satan's going to, you'll be a prey for Satan, okay? And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. It displeased him that man's, that, that um, it would seem that every time a man tried to do what was right, he ended up that they were, they were all, all the others in sin were after him. He become prey to them. So he had an answer, and you find it in the next verse. And let me tell you before we even read it, he sent Christ. He sent Christ to walk the earth, to be among us, to show us how, to be an example, an example whereby you could see and understand. Why? Because God loves you. Even in, even uh, he, he won't love what you're doing when you're sinning, when you've got that breach in the wall. But he loves you when you try to change. And verse 16, And he saw that there was no man, there was no Savior, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. He sent Christ. This is talking about the Savior. This is talking about the Messiah, the intercessor, the one that in his name you have power and authority. That when you become confused or when you decide to break out of the ways of the world and Satan, the cockatrice eggs and webs of lies, that the first moment you stay, you won't be a pride to pray to the wicked because Christ will be with you. He says, I will hear you. And so he does. How precious it is that he sends this one. We'll pick it up here in the next lecture. And we'll learn of the breastplate and the helmet of salvation, the one he sent. Do you know him? You know, it's important that you do. Because... When you know him, you seal that breach up in the wall. You can find that wall in the parameters. You know exactly where you are. You know you're a child of God and that your heritage is of Jacob and all those covenants and promises that were made to our people. All right. Hey, don't miss the next lecture. Listen a moment, won't you please? The 